Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Battlefront, Friends of War have re-released some kits or some sets that had been out some years ago. They've been out of service. So a lot of the kits in here, I think, previously had been resin and metal. Parts or certainly large elements of it. Whereas now, I think a lot of it is plastic. There's four of them out there. I think they're only, I don't know for sure, but I think they're only available for a short window. But they are specific formations from the Normandy conflict. Here we've got Panzer Lehr which is one of the crack German panzer divisions from the theatre. Do you want to tell them what they get in a box, Wooly? Right. One Panzer Grenadier Company HQ, two Panzer Grenadier Platoons, eight two five one half tracks, four Jag Panzer pa sorry, Jag Panzer fours, three fifteen centi centimeter Nebelwerfer, uh, two SDKFZ ten slash four self propelled anti aircraft guns. Seven unit cards, and because it's the special edition, mm. ten metal Panzerlehr infantry to theme your Panzer Grenadier platoons, one destroyed Tiger objective, one destroyed Cromwell objective, twenty Panzerlehr dice, twenty Panzerlehr tokens, and two objectives, and two Panzerlehr decal sheets. So there's a lot of stuff in there, and it's about Panzerlehr. Uh, yeah. What I mean, one of the things I'm interested in seeing this is you get the box open. So Panzerlehr, from memory, is one of these divisions that's formed up from 1944 Fort Normandy, and they trail a lot of the Panzer schools, the training schools, to get experienced officers. You know, like the ones that still got two arms and two legs. Yeah. They're like, actually, you're going to come out of training school. You're going to form this new unit. Um, and so it goes into combat for the first time in Normandy, but it's also got all the toys. It's like, this is how we want to make our Panzer divisions going forwards. There's a lot of stuff in there. Is ready? that just the tank commanders? No, there's all kinds of bits there. We're going to go through it all, so... Pulls it all out. So there definitely is an amount of resin Ooh, that, in here. That's going to be Are fun repacking that. That's not going back in that box, is it? All right, <laughs> give us a minute, we'll sort them out as pars and we'll talk it through it. Quite a few things in here. What we'll do is we'll start with like the Panzerlehr unique things, and then we'll look at the sprues and things for those of you that haven't seen everything before, because I think a lot of this stuff you have seen. So Panzerlehr unique things, first of all, is you get the dice. It's 20 little black D6s there with the, with the little L on there. It's an L, not a J for Panzerlehr. That is the divisional symbol. So they're nice to get. And that's the kind of thing that you get in these tins. That yes. they do, don't you? you get 20 dice. And then you get tokens and objective markers. And again, they're the same tokens and objectives that you'll recognize with the, you know, the bailed out and the pinned down and so forth. They just have a unique symbol. Now, this, to a lot of people, this is just another sort of gimmicky bit or whatever. You do need these tokens though. And if you if you painted your guys up as Panzerlehr, I like the fact that you can get a set of Panzerlehr acrylic tokens. I actually normally use some quite generic bulk and cross ones, but the acrylic tokens are so much nicer than like a little bit of cardboard or a different colored dice just dumped on the table. Yeah. All right. So those are the things that make them uniquely uh, pencil. But you would have got that if you buy one of their tins. Similarly, there's no rule book in here. There is, however, I've not seen one of these before in a Flames oh, of War thing. Oh, QR code. QR code, which is going to take you to the assembly instructions on their website, I assume. If you don't use their website, there's so much information on there, but there are really detailed build instructions for everything they do, precise breakdowns of how they expect you to make things. Like If you look at this kit on their website, this Panzer Lair Division, it will show you a photograph of every sprue. There'll be links to like how, right down to which figures you put on what base to make the different infantry sections. Right, uh, decal sheet. Is that white bit in the middle? Is that the L? Yes. It is, yeah. I just can't see it. So you've got Balkan crosses, tank numbers, uh, and, the pa and, the and some number plates. And, some, and some number plates at the bottom as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we also get the unit cards. Now, a little bit disappointing. There is nothing, there's not a specific Panzerlehr company. 
Um, so it's just using the Armoured Grenadier Panzer Company HQ. Um, but it has provided the unit cards for the units that are in here, which is good. They just don't have like bespoke stats. Yeah. All right. So let's have a look at the kits. All right, what you got first there, Woolly? Yag Panzers. Yag Panzer IV. So Yag Panzer IV is the same kit. It's the Panzer IV L70, but this is the its earlier iteration, uh, which you'd seen in Normandy. But it is it's the same kit. The only difference is. It's got a shorter gun. Well, it's the 2020 kit, so it still can make the L70 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, if you wanted to do that. But the, this is for the Normandy, so you've got the standard 7.5 centimetre. These coming in, it's two, three, or four. How many do we get here? We four? get four. We get four in here. These are for 11, 17, or 23 points. So about six points a model, give or take. Are they good? They've got the same sort of stats as, all, as a lot of German vehicles at this point, so they're careful, they're veteran, um, and they've got the last, third right last stand. The gun then is halted two and moving one, anti-tank 11, firepower three up and four firing. So this is this is a Sherman killer. Yeah. yeah? It's not going to take out any of the, of the big, big gun uh, tanks on the Soviet side, but it's not on the Soviet side. It is in Normandy. You built the L70, Mike? Yeah, I've um, I, I dug out some L70 kits that I had um, that are going to go in my Clash of Steel. Mm -hmm. So I've got. Oh that. right, yes. So for those of you that are playing Clash of Steel, the, this kit is usable in Clash of Steel as well as the, as the L70. Yeah. yeah. Six to eight main pieces it goes together really easy. All yeah. keyed, all, all marked up. You probably don't even need instructions after a while with these. No, and, and like you said, this is it's a 2020 kit, and they're, they're, they're kits, their first few, there are big changes through. And we'll see that when we look at the um, 251 yeah. in a minute. That's a, that's a much older kit. But they've kind of reached that point. Said they, know, they know what they're doing. They make, they make great kits, and they just keep getting better and keep getting easier. Low parts count, thin sprue gates, we say the same things about just about all of their kits. It's a good kit, and it, it it's and you can tell. It's yep. good. all right. Next up, then two five ones, two five ones, and we get a lot of these. I've got five, and I've got another four here. Are these the same? They are the same ones, I yep. think. Identical. Yeah. Yep. So we've got nine of them in here. It does say it's an armored infantry company. A little bit of history, Mike. German uh, two five one half tracks. They're in all the movies, right? Yeah. They are what you see. Only one battalion in an armoured regiment, of which there are six infantry battalions, I think. Only the first battalion of the first regiment in the brigade have APCs. The rest of them are in trucks. So these are the, the top-end guys, the yeah. ones that are in this, in this stuff. So... This, to what I was saying earlier about being an older kit, you can see on this, uh, the tubing's different. It's of a different generation. It's of, you know, as one of the ways it's a different generation. Does it have a date on it down the bottom there? It does. Probably says something. 2000 and... 2013. 2013. 2013. Ah, it's too old. So, the sprue gates are much thicker. And what that means is your chance that you damage the part when you're removing it from the sprue is significantly higher. And not that these are bad, just the newer ones are a lot, lot better. Um, I've built a few of these. It, so it's slightly different to some of the um, other kits that you might be more used to in terms of building a tank. So um, the, the way that the tracks go on they also contain a little bit of the side. They do slot in well though, and they are properly keyed, so it does all lock into position. You also, when you build the in, you do need to put part of the interior into it. So there's a piece that drops in, which has got a driver's seat and so forth, which you can see just here. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's keyed, so you get it in the right way and it locks in, so it's been good in that position. The danger with these kits always is that you damage the MGs, taking them off the sprue, but they've given you a few of them, all right? Uh, if you are looking at these and thinking, um, I'm not 
Uh, I'm not sure what these bits are. Do you know what these bits are? They're Pioneer bridges. These are, yeah, they are very small pon for pontoon bridging. Yep. Bridging equipment. Now, I don't quite know exactly how they attach. They go on the... I know they go on the, the top at the sides. If, if you look on the underneath, I've actually built a couple of these. If you actually look underneath, the, yeah. the, the bracket is at an angle. Right. So that when you put it on the top shell, it fits that. It fits that angle. Yeah. It lines so up. So then, the then they sit. And then, and does it lock? They're a bit fiddly, but they do then sip level they do with sit the level. Because I have, I've, uh, just as, yeah. a, as an aside, I thought I've got some, so I build a few as pioneers. You build a few, yeah, yeah. Um, and there is uh, um, uh, an engineer battalion which has some of those in every Panzer yep. and Panzer Grenadier formation as well. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's a good kit. It does have separate front wheels as well, which fit onto. Uh, the axles are just that, just below the them. axle, yeah. So compared to a lot of their other kits, that does end up being a little bit fiddly, mm. especially if you're using plastic glue. When you put those wheels on, make sure you rest it upside down so that it's, the weight's not on the wheel. Because if it moves, it's gonna it's gonna right an angle. You, you get clam car wheels. You get yeah, you're gonna get clam car wheels if you're not careful yeah. with that. And uh, there are deep holes. It's not gonna happen. And uh, if you're paying attention yeah. and being careful, but it is just something to be mindful of. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's coming with okay. the 37mm gun as well. Yeah, so the 37mm is, I think in Flames of War, per kind of infantry platoon, one of them can take that. And that is that is a historic. It's actually the commander's vehicle, in you know, within an infantry platoon. Yeah. The command vehicle had the 37mm gun. All of the other bigger weapons that you might have seen on a on a two five zero five one are actually different versions of the vehicle. They're not infantry transports; they're weapons platforms. But the thirty seven is just that you know one in four, one in five. It's a command vehicle. Yeah, the other ones will fall into the support slots rather than yeah, being yeah. A, they're, a, they're not baked into the infantry yeah. formations. In flames of war. If you've got infantry on embarked in an, in a, an assault transport, it just it's assault numbers. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think they can fire from on board the platform. They might be able to, but they definitely they can assault integral with the vehicle. I don't think they're literally representing like driving into you in the vehicle. It's representing the vehicle supporting yeah. them very closely, um, but it significantly improves their assault numbers up to a three plus. Uh, yeah, so that's nice to see. And you do, if you want to play an armored infantry company, you do need them. Yeah, you've not used a lot of mech infantry now, games. We, uh, you, you've played my um, US mech infantry. Yes, that's true. And your light armored and cars. And my my light armored cars, but they're mostly light armored cars rather than yeah. transported infantry. Yeah. But yeah, I, I have had we have had a game where I bought my US armored division. Mm. With several half tracks yeah, for with the, the heavy infantry. infantry. Yeah. All right. So that's another piece of plastic dealt with. All of those. And then we get the gun sprue. So in this kit, it's telling you to make them as naval verfers, which are the rocket battery. But it is actually a very flexible sprue because the the gun carriage is common to a lot of guns. So you'll see on here you've got a couple of pack forty. Um, is it pack 40 or pack 38? The 50 mil gun? Well, it's, the, the sprue says pack 36. Pack 36, does it? But there are four different... There are four different guns on here yeah. and the naval verfer. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these are actually mid-war guns and they just put the naval verfer on. Uh, and it's quite an interesting the way that the naval verfer is constructed. You see it's in three parts. You get this almost like this revolver cylinder. Yeah. It's one end of it. And then these other p two pieces up here you glue together and it's the, uh, it's the other end of it. And then you attach it to the carriage. Really simple. This sprue looks busy, but you don't use most of the parts. And be mindful, it does offer you two different types of wheels. And the different guns did use different, different wheels. It's not the German army is not nearly as mechanized or motorized as you would think. 
there's still an enormous amount of horse-drawn equipment and there's there's quite a lot of quite modern guns on on but spoked wheels which are designed to be towed by horses yes as opposed to that but you you that wouldn't be the case with this because it's in a panzer division they didn't all even have pneumatic tires you know because rubber is a, is a very precious material in nazi germany so any of these I've built the standard um, Pack 36, I think, yeah. for my Germans, yeah. Yeah. I've not had any with a Nebelwerfer list, but no. they sound fun. <laughs> well, they're they're interesting. Um, so they're rockets, so they get that big template, which is about 10 inches across yes. as opposed to about 6 inches across. And that's good. Um, but in terms of it's only got an anti-tank power to the salvo template, they call it. So only got an anti-tank power of two, and it's only got a four up firepower. See, rockets are not better than artillery, they're different. Yeah. And they're a lot cheaper. I mean, that's just six tubes. Yes. Uh, on a on a on a on a you know, bogey, <laughs> basically. <laughs> You, you know, it's not not much more sophisticated than an old pram with Ooh. some tubes on it. Stalin's organ on the back of the zip. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which is just some rails with this, which they stick rockets on. So the the kind of the technology is pretty breaking it, cutting edge. But the actual manufacturing, compared to boring out and rifling a gun, which takes a you know artillery piece takes a long time. And so they allow you to fairly cheaply saturate an area. But they're never going to hit things directly. Yeah. So they're much more about the shock and air. Or, and the reason I point that out is because in fl it's about what you use artillery for in Flames of War. And in Flames of War, you normally you need artillery to dig out um, infantry in, in, in entrenched foot positions and things like that. Um, and in that respect, you're going to get a lot of coverage. But dropping this stuff down on on the top of tanks isn't actually going to achieve as much as you might think it should given the size of the munition. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Although our last game of Flames of War, my artillery did do for your Panthers. That That is a fact, and that was because you were extremely lucky. <laughs> Always. <laughs> but it can happen. You can bail out a Panther. Um, yeah, and if you can bail it a second time, you can make it re-roll. And sometimes you just get incredibly lucky, don't you, Mike? With green dice, yeah. yeah. I've just noticed there is actually a, um, a rocket on the sprue and yeah. an empty shell. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice little sprue. And it, it, it looks complicated because it makes five or six guns. Yeah. Different types. Which, again... You're starting to see more of on their kits, like the um, Panzer, the Jag Panzer. Yeah. It was released as the Panzer 470, but they put the gun on it so that it could be a Jag Panzer. Yeah. Is that, that's not quite all of the plastic, but it's most of it. We've got the infantry sprue to look at. We won't labour the point on the infantry, I don't think. This infantry sprue has been around uh, in almost all of their German yep. starter armies. You're going to get one of these. It's great um, in so far as there's 24 guys on here. It is a late war stuff. Most, of, not most, but many of these guys are in smocks rather than in tunics. Um, and there's and the machine guns are MG42s. Yeah. This is a late. This is a you know 43 plus uh, German infantry sprue, but they're lovely. No two guys on 24 figures on here. No two guys on the same pose. Some of them classic. Your grenade throwing guy, etc. Yeah. But uh, this is really nice. I would love to see them do more of these. You know, like another yeah. another sprue with different poses. Yeah. And I still Panzer Nacker. Still never seen it's, one used in a game. Still never <laughs> seen one used in a game. There's no rules. So the Panzer Nacker is the guy you've got over here. Um, and it does have a, a we haven't said is they do have the labels on the sprue, a two-letter code telling what each of these figures is. Yeah. PK's for Panzermacher. It's a bundle of uh, thermite grenades, basically, around the central point uh, used in anti-tank warfare. You also have... That's because I don't know you built Flames of War Germany. I've got you? some German, yes. Yeah. Is I love the firing over the shoulder thing. So yeah. this, this, <laughs> this MG42 is a two-man team. There's loads of footage, no, not footage, 
photographs, German MG teams, is the, is the loader braces the gun against his shoulder and holds the bipod while the gunner fires. And I, I just can't imagine how astonishingly deafening that is. But there's no shortage of photographs and manuals telling mm. you to do that. Maybe it isn't as loud as I think it is. I only know what British soldiers said about hearing it being fired from somewhere else at them said it was pretty loud. <laughs> So yeah. the idea that this is just ripping past your ear, but it was it was doctrine it was in the manual. Yeah. Um, yeah, mind you, I've never seen it done in Hollywood. So. <laughs> no, because of me a health and safety nightmare. <laughs> the guy there would be wearing like massive ear defenders, uh, so that he didn't. So uh, there are the core bits. Yeah, sarcast gun sar crews. Sarcast gun crews. This will be the BM eighty one or whatever it is. What is it? BM135, which is their, their standard set of Sirecast gun crew. And it's, if you're new to this, it's worth noting, you don't need all six of these crew figures. It's because they're all carrying, three of them are carrying three different types of ammunition. Yep. The one that looks like a massive dildo <laughs> is the Naval <laughs> Murfer one. I mean, I don't know, I got you, caught, you, you can try and hide it. It looks like a massive dildo. Um, <laughs> the others are carrying shells for the other gun types. So across the various sprues, it's worth saving those other crew figures for um, other kits as you get other guns so you can have, you can potentially mix and match the combinations because you are going to use four of each of these. Well, what I've done is, because um, obviously I've got things like priests and mm. M10s and M36s, mm. you can often, if you trim the base off, you can put them into the turrets of open top vehicles as well. Some of these guys? Yeah. Right, okay. I mean, then, there, there aren't many German open top vehicles. Yeah, well, I, I would say, I've, I've done it for the Americans. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do, you could do that. Um, and the, these are these are just um, basically recasts of the metal, I think. They're, yeah. the, they're the same sculpts. So, like a lot of the Sire cast, the definition is, is, is pretty good. It's not like some of that early Sire cast was a bit smooth. With the blobby ones. Yeah, yeah. where they was, where they just, it just hadn't picked up the definition. Um, it's not everyone's favourite material. If you've not used this stuff before, it is not plastic, so it won't stick with plastic glue. Um, and painting straight on it might not be very good. It's funny to get used to because it's got a kind of chalky texture yeah. to it. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but it, it is... Probably a really agent from the mold, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, but all the major companies are using this now. It is just we're just gonna have to get used to it. <laughs> yeah, but the later, the later ones are they are they they are much better. Good. Yeah. Yeah. What we're not starting to see yet is stuff that's been that's, the masters have been made with Sirecast intended because yeah. there's obviously going to be some advantages and disadvantages versus metal um, in the way that it it interacts with the with the molds. A few things left. Bases. Mountain of bases um, and base plugs. Base plugs. Yeah. The extra large ones for the guns, the four slots and three slots, and I think assume there's probably some two slots for so two slots and some one slots. Yeah, and a Shrek. Oh, all oh, self-explanatory. Easy to make them up all in different um, formations. So you've got four figures on each base, and you've got twenty-four guys with yeah. which to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So in here is another mountain. At first, I was like, is that a massive pile of tank commanders? There aren't actually many tanks in this. No, mm. these are going to be mostly vehicle crews. Oops, sorry, yeah. I dropped that. So in here, there's probably three types. Right, so yeah, none of those then. This is the 251 sprue, Oop, crew sprue. You've got five guys on here. They've got no uh, base at the feet because they're going to go inside these vehicles. Um, can you get all five of these guys in one of them? No. You might be able to, but it'd be a real <laughs> squeeze. I mean, technically, these things have ten guys sat side yeah. by side on the benches. But, uh, yeah. So you've got the decapitated driver, or half-body half driver. He's not decapitated. Uh, he's he's um, lost his legs. Dis dis bodied. And then you've got two guys that sit on the seats, um, yeah. an officer, and then obviously the guy with the machine gun, which you can either... Yeah, combined with the mount rather than using them off the spring. Yeah, so rather than trying to sort of dig one of these out, which might be which can be difficult, this guy is at the right height because I've done it yeah. on one of mine that it'll poke straight through the gun shield. 
these tiny little gun shields here. Um, so yeah, I love the crew figure in the yeah. back of the, in the back of the vehicles. It it really brings them to life when you put the crew figure. At the very least, seeing the driver's head. Yeah, in the in the open top vehicles yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, so again, with my US armoured, mm. I've got. Because you've got, you end up with sort of like quite a few half tracks. Yeah. Some of them are full of troops and some aren't. Yeah. So during the game, you can swap them out and yeah. the troops get out yeah. just as a, a memory. Um, but yeah, they're very flexible ways of doing them. You also get six command sprues. We call it the command sprue. Probably what you need for, and this is the bazooka sprue, as it may also not be known. So you've got, um, you've got this fantastic uh, for you the voice over the yeah the commander the, the, figure in it in a big leather the trench coat. Coat, yeah 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 with his hand on his hip and all that kind of thing looking like the general in so many movies yeah uh, but you get the bazooka and and the sport guy and then some other nco type figures you've got uh, two two ncos and then there's also a, a, the middle man's a radio is it radio man yeah but yeah yeah i think i hadn't realized that that guy was a radio man yeah. actually because um, I haven't built so many of these. Yeah. But yeah, that's going to give you six of your bazookas. Is there a bazooka on the main one? There's a lot of Panzerfaust, but I don't think there is a bazooka on that. No, there, no. There's... So you need that because you are going to be taking quite a lot of infantry with this. Yeah. Expand the armoured Panzer Grand platoon. And each of the platoons can have up to three Panzerschreck in each platoon, three base of Panzerschreck. So across the company, that's another six yeah. bases. That's why that's where they've done that. Um, and if you're playing um, Normandy, like sort of pseudo historical forces yeah. in the Normandy campaign, you're going to come up against yeah. a lot of Shermans, and the Bazooka's a pretty good way of dealing with it. Yeah, and there's three Panzerfaust on each sprue as well. So. Right. The, the Panzerfausts are more decorative, though. You know, yes. actually, whereas the Bazookas are separate two-man bases, two-man teams. Um, the infantry in here it is that superior German infantry. It's accounting for um, the higher rate of fire, for some assault rifles and things like that, in that they're three halted and two moving. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the American ones, where they're just rifle bases, it's one and one. Yes. Yeah. And the, and the weapons bases are quite different. By this point in the war, most German squads have got two MG42s in them. And this is another interesting gamey thing about these vehicles is the the rear mounted, the rear pintle mounted bit gun on a, a 251 is not the 251's gun. It's the squad's gun. So when they embark, they mount their MG on that position and they operate. Yeah. The one at the front is part of the crew. The one at the back is the passenger's own gun. Yeah, so um, you're perfectly valid to, if you've not got any guys in it, that that back thing shouldn't have a gun on it. Because when they dismount, they take it with them. Yeah. Uh, and then you get one of the ubiquitous vehicles through, which is plenty, because there's only four... Four armoured vehicles. So armoured vehicles. Going to have one. And, and I don't normally model... I normally only model one guy in the platoon commander up. To signify it's yeah. the command vehicle. And we've only got the one platoon, so yeah. I, I would only yeah. be using one of those. You would literally use one yeah. model out of this lot. Still a few bits to go. This is where we're getting down into the sort of... The, the specials. The specials. By specials we mean resin and metal, yeah. really. So we're getting a couple of objective markers. Have a feast your eyes on that. So this is a big lump of resin. This is not Sio cast. This is traditional yeah. cast resin. So there's a beat up tiger, which is a very nice model. It's like a part of a building has collapsed on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe tried to go through and so forth. Because the vehicle's reasonably intact, which I suppose is the tiger, right? Yeah. The building fell on it, it couldn't move, but it, 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 it hadn't been yeah. totally destroyed. And um, yeah, so like the hatch has popped off it and so forth. Which is quite nice. And then there you've got a uh, Cromwell. Isn't Cromwell, it? yeah. It looks like it's taken a hit to the running gear. Right. On the ability to kill. Yeah. A uh, bit of camouflage, some storage on the box, back of it. A nice piece. Yeah they're, yeah, they're nice pieces. And they are 
on the kind of the artillery bases. Yeah. Size of these are the same size. These are intended to be used as objectives. It's nice that they give you two different ones, but I think what's my objective in getting to a ruined Cromwell if I'm German? Yeah. Anyway, um, you also get rather than this this tiny little bag of metal in here, which is, now this is the bit that does confuse me about this set a little bit. Um, I think that's the tiger barrel. That looks like a tiger barrel. That looks like the tiger barrel. There's a little bit of clean up to do on that. There's some flash, but there is a tiger barrel there, which it doesn't strictly need if it's supposed to be a damaged vehicle. It's a straight one on a damaged vehicle. <laughs> it's a straight one on a damaged vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> feel free to bend that. <laughs> so you get they say that it's ten guys. One, two, three. How many have you got there? I've got three in my hand. You got three? Yeah, I've got seven here. Uh, so this is 10 Panzerlaire metal sculpts. Flames of War do have an extensive range of different infantry types in metal. But this can, this one confuses me, I've got to say. I don't want to be like hugely critical, but the Panzerlaire uniform is different. It is not a tunic, it is not a smock, it is the Panzer Crew uniform. You know that kind of very big collar on a like a double breasted short jacket yeah um they wear that uh uniform i'm not sure what the thinking was why they particularly did that but that is the uniform they wore it's in a green rather than in the black of the, yeah. of the panzer crew so why i'm thrown by it is not that these are not the right infantry is that all that plastic infantry isn't the right infantry. Yeah. You know, if this is supposed to be Panzer Lairs, Panzer Grenadiers, then they should all be, they should like, all this. be like this. Yeah. yeah. And the suggestion was on the box that you could use a few of these to sort of mix in. I mean, you can, but most of those guys are in smocks or tunics. Most of them in tunics. Yeah. As these guys are in a completely different uniform. You do have to make, you've got basically a squad here though, right? You've got yeah. a couple of NCO type figures, several riflemen. I've got the MG team. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I like this one, this is unusual. Laying down with a Panzerfaust. Laying down with a Panzerfaust. Although it's on an oval base, so. Ah, you might not have seen these. So if you buy Flames of War's scenic bases, some of the slots are pill shaped. Oh, no, I've not used those. And they have, so it's, it's one of the modular ways that they can make these scenic bases be more, you know, because they have like plug in bits of trees, yes. like, which have the same round footprint. But they also have a pill shaped one where they've got some pieces which are pill shaped, but then they have a pill shape with a cut into it. So it's the half pill and, and a circle. And you could put that either way around. So yeah. the idea is like across 20 bases, no two are the same, even though you've used the same base. Yeah. And that guy would slot right in there. Right, I've, I've not used those, attention. I'll have to try some. Somewhere. Have a look at those, yeah. yeah. The thing is you can't half and half it. Yes. So I did it when I started, whenever I started a new project, I moved to those mm. countryside scenic bases. But yeah, the, the, these are nice. I just, I guess, I, I feel that they should have provided a full platoon of these instead of the plastic oh, I think so. Because the uniform is different. It's clear on the, the it's, especially if you look at him, the uniform, the double-breasted tunic is so pronounced. Yeah, yeah. It, but even, even on this scale, you're going to notice yeah. that that uniform is different. Um, and their helmets have helmet covers. Unlike many of the Vermont yeah. ones don't. So it's just such an iconic, it's the one like the modeler knows it's different. A lot of people have Panzerlaire in their collection, because they want another German force that just looks mm. different to all their others. So yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, devastated about it. But it be would have been nice to have had. Yeah, you're going to be breaking out your sharp knife and your file on these, though. Don't yeah, you? yeah, that's uh, uh, which is inevitably yeah. the thing about. And it's why the plastic single cast mm. infantry is vastly superior. The definition on it is really good. The posing is really good, and the cleanup time is near nil. Yeah. These are probably as good or nearly as good as Scott's, but there's a lot more work to do. You have a combination of all mediums. All mediums. You can make all kinds of different things with this. Yeah. So this is the SDKZ 10-4, 10 10 
which is the um, anti-aircraft the, the, the tractor with a two centimeter anti-aircraft cannon on it. Is that right? Is it a two centimeter? Yeah. I didn't know that this sprue existed. I didn't know that they had a plastic two centimeter anti-aircraft gun. Flat thirty eight, as it's called in here. Yeah, has it got a date on it? 2018. 2018. I didn't know they did this because I'm not sure I've seen them sell it like separately as a thing, but it does have a ground mount. Yeah. Yeah, there. So the, the, what they're doing with this is they're giving you a resin body for your SDKFZ10, which is a prime mover used for a number of different things, um, and then an entire plastic two centimeter flak which plugs in, and this has been designed in such a way as it can go on its own ground mount, or it can fit into this mount here. And then, presumably, that's metal tracks, is it? Uh, so, a oh, and gunner? And seated gunner. Yes. And four heads. I've just noticed that the driver's moulded in. Oh, gosh, he's got no head! <laughs> Let's see you choose your head. Yeah. That wow. That is an amount of modeling for 15 mil that I, that impresses <laughs> me. I'm gonna guess that that is a response to the fact that the heads that maybe he did have a head at one point and he didn't come out of the mold well very well very yeah. often. So they've molded separate metal heads and responding to that, which is good. I mean I might be wrong, but I'm just seeing how his shoulders are kind of in line with the height there. Or maybe like in shipping, people were receiving these and said, the guy's shed, yeah. head is sheared off in transit. Yeah, so four tracks. Yeah. Clearly marked left and right. Oh, yeah, that's always good. And and there's a, there's a, an indent in the bodywork for yeah. them. There's a, there's a clearly identified spot for you to put it in and line it up. And then... It's actually quite a good fit. Yeah. So often with these resin and metal kits, not I'm not talking about flames or specifically, just in general, these things are not well fit. But this is well keyed, isn't it? That is going in well. Yep. Yeah, it fits nicely. And then the wheels have got quite a large lug lug on the back, which slots in very nicely. That is really well done. Oh, that the wheel's is, fallen off. That is very well done because it that's. Yeah. The fit there, look, it's not, the wheel's not falling out. Yeah. Although, I, I know yours did. I, that, that was me dropping it, not. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good fit, that. But it's also the depth of the well and the shape of it, so it's kind of square at the end, but tapered, means your wheel shouldn't clown car, because it's quite a big kind of It's a square peg in a square piece. hole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll only go in one way nicely, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot, because there's, there's, very little was in the kind of the model maker who that you, you finish it and you've got one wheel at that angle and one wheel at that angle at yeah, the front right. as they've sagged so that shouldn't happen you are going to need super glue for this you are going to need a sharp knife yeah. to clean up the metal so he sits in his seat yeah and and it, it is a nice kit right down to that individual this one surprised me actually not surprised it's in there it said it on the box and i knew i knew they didn't make a plastic kit yeah. this but quite how nice it is for a resin and metal kit. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Yes, yes, yeah. that's going to go together easy. And then the, the hole on the, uh, the the mounting hole on both of them, so that's going to be interchangeable. So if you've got them as a ground, so you, you can base yeah. the ground mount and and just pop it in and out. And that is that going to be? It looks like it's probably a deep and 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 straight enough hole that it will slot in and not need. You yeah, know, not need to yeah. be glued in place. So you can spin it round during a game for your own amusement. And it being plastic, you probably want to take it out. You can take it out for transport. Yeah, I You know, when you're moving it from the club to home or whatever. Like it. Like it. Surprise them. And I really didn't know that they did this. Well, we've only, we've only played one game with aircraft, you and myself. My Thunderbolts did. I know, do. I watched their plastic releases very closely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just saying, yeah. um, we've not actually used AA in a game. No. Um, as I yeah. say, I had my Thunderbolts in one, but they didn't arrive mm -hmm. until didn't, towards the end. Yeah. yeah. So the AA element is something that's interesting. Yeah. Well, so it's three and two as a shooting thing. Um, it does have the dedicated AA rule. 
five anti-tank power and five up firepower. So it's not great at shooting anything else. It's not terrible, but the dedicated AA rule means yeah. it can engage aircraft, which is why it's important. So why are the Germans using basically trucks, which is what this is just a tracked truck for anti-aircraft rather than using a tank? To keep up with the light infantry. No, it's because they don't have never built enough tanks. <laughs> They're just tanks. So although a lot of other people build self-propelled air. So you've probably seen the vest vin and the verbal vin, the self-propelled AA for the Germans. But they're on Panzer IVs. And you will mm. note from talking about like the Jag Panzer and so forth, the Panzer IV is A, the primary medium tank until late 43. So the Panther numbers are anything like what they would need to be. So they need the Panzer IV holds to make Panzer IVs. They need them to make the, the abortive Stug IV program, the Jag Panzer program. So actually, things like Ostwin and Verbalvin are very late and in very small numbers. Clearly, the best way to keep up with a Panzer IV and make, keep pace is with another Panzer IV, yeah. right? Um, so because they'll have the same off-road performance and so forth. But the Germans are still using that truck-mounted AA um, or tractor-mounted in the case of these. Very, very late in the war. They also have a growing AA problem. Like, German air superiority is a big part of the early yeah. war and not a thing in the late war. So it's like a, a, a problem that they're poorly equipped to deal with later on. Yeah. So was that all of the things? Did we get That's through all, all of the things, yes. The, 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 the standard kit, the dice, the tokens, the additional markers and... The half tracks, the anti aircraft guns. A great kit. I think it's I think it's good. It is an infantry company and it does have the right so what I I really like the fact that you're not getting tanks here when it's supposed to be an a, a, a Panzer Grenadier company. Because the Germany has so few tanks. There are no tanks in non Panzer formations. Yeah. In the Panzer Grenadier formations, there is a Panzer Battalion. But it doesn't have panzers in it, it has stugs in it. But it's like, one day, when things are better, these will be tanks. Yeah. But for now, they're not. And this is a panzer gun. Near company, those self-propelled guns are what supports infantry. That's what uh, Ma uh, Manstein wanted them for. Mm. That's what they're there to do. Um, so it's a really nice force. There's only 10 figures in here out of all of this that are actually panzer lair. I love the dice, the markers are going to use all that, and I'm probably going to get at some point some more Panzer Lair figures, because really what this is, is a late war German infantry comp armoured infantry company. And in that respect, it's really good. You just These are these are just like little glamour yeah. bits um, for fanboys, which I'm actually really pleased with. Yeah. I think this is, this is a really nice kit. Uh, out of these, I don't have any of these, the 10 fours. I ain't going to need them because you've got Thunderbolts now. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't need to worry about that. Although I have some Panzer IV 70s, I don't have any uh, Jag Panthers, Jag Panzers, so I'm probably going to use them. So even like someone with a big collection like me. Yeah. Same with the Nebelver for Sprue. I don't have all of those gun types. So, yeah, really pleased with it. Retail price, we looked at it, was about £115. £115, pounds, yeah. yeah. So pretty reasonable. But for that, there was... 11 vehicles, three gun teams, all these extra, um, you know, lovely bits. Uh, two more vehicles in Formula 15 these. vehicles. Yeah, yeah, because of these, which yeah. we haven't accounted for. Yeah. Forspers are infantry, loads of bazooka teams. I think I think it's all right. It is a little bit dearer than usual, but you are getting these nice, nice bonus yeah. bits. And it's very Normandy. Panzerlaire are at Normandy. And if you dig deep, Panzerlaire actually had a couple of King Tigers in Normandy. <laughs> so that could really surprise your opponent who said, well, mate, I'm just playing with the historical order of battle yeah. here. Here's my two King Tigers. Don't know whether you're allowed to take them in the rules, but, you know, who knows? Yeah, you've got them. <laughs> you've, got, you've got them. I hope that was useful for you guys. Thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flame to War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.